Hello everyone, this is Dr. Amanya Shukla, a second year resident at Dr. D.Y. Patel Hospital, Pimpri, Pune, and I'll be presenting my paper on MDCT assessment of craniovertebral junction abnormalities. Introduction, CVJ is a complex and dynamic region of spine that incorporates the basilar part of occipital bone, atlas, and axis vertebra. It protects the lower brainstem and upper cervical spine. CVG abnormalities can be due to congenital or acquired causes and are seen in almost all age groups. These treatable neurological disorders are one of the major causes of spinal cord, vascular, and nerve compression and of hydrocephalus. And so correct diagnosis and pre-treatment evaluation is important. The aim of the paper is to study and systematically classify various frequently detected and some rare developmental and acquired CVJ abnormalities and to study the role of imaging in correctly diagnosing CVJ abnormalities with MDCT. Uh, so our study was a prospective descriptive study with the duration of study being approximately two years. The patients were scanned using 128 slice MDCT scanner and the sample size was of 60 patients, which were all suspected patients of CVJ abnormalities from all age groups and gender. So the results of our study were such that the out of 60 patients, male patients were most commonly uh, affected. All patients were spanned all age groups. However, the most common age group was of 30 to 39 years. Amongst the etiologies, congenital etiology was the most common with 51 cases out of the 60. Then trauma had five cases. There were two cases of infective etiology and two of inflammatory etiology. And amongst them, 29 patients had degenerative findings. Amongst the congenital abnormalities, 40 patients out of the 60 patients had findings of basilar invagination along with other associated uh, CVJ abnormalities. And amongst those CVJ abnormalities, Atlanta occipital assimilation was the most common, followed by os odontoidium and platypasia. Then Atlanto axial instability and subluxation was seen in 20 of the patients and there was associated C2, C3 block vertebra in 18 patients. Coming to the cases, uh, craniometry is very important in assessing CVJ abnormalities. So the most common lines which are used are McRae's line from the basion till the pistion, the Chamberlain's line from the posterior edge of hard palate till opistion, and the McGregor's line. Uh, the angles which are used are Welcher basal angle and Clivus canal angle, which are used to assess platypasia. So this is a case wherein Im image 1A shows that the tip of odontoid process is 14 millimeters above the McRae's line and 18 mm above the Chamberlain's line. And it is causing narrowing at the level of foramen magnum and compression of medulla and the CVJ. This is suggestive of basal ion rogenation. In image 1B, the Welcher basal angle was 157 degrees and the Clivus canal angle was 100 degrees, suggestive of platybasia. There's another case of a 35-year-old woman with neck pain and a congenital short neck wherein we can see that image 1C shows that the odontoid process is 12.4 millimeters above McRae's line, and there were multiple congenital block vertebrae. This is suggestive of basal line invagination with vertebral segmentation anomalies, which is commonly seen in Klippelfield syndrome. This is a case of Atlanta occipital assimilation. So the first case where image 2A shows complete fusion of C1 with the occiput uh, suggests complete atlanto occipital assimilation 2a uh, sorry 2b 2c and 2d shows that there is a fusion of lateral masses of c1 with occipital condyles and fusion of right anterior and posterior arch with occiput however there is no fusion of left anterior and posterior arches of c1 vertebra suggestive of partial atlanto occipital assimilation in the same case, we can see that there's wide, widened atlantodental interval distance with change on dynamic studies, that is on flexion and extension, suggestive of atlantoaxial instability. Also, image 3D shows that there's a increased space between the C1 lateral mass and dense on the left side as compared to the right side, which is suggestive of atlantoaxial rotatory subluxation.
Next is a case of atlas posterior arch anomaly, which shows a well corticated midline bony defect seen in the posterior arch of atlas. Coming to uh, image 5A and 5B, showing a smooth, well corticated ossicle posterior to the anterior arch of atlas vertebra, which is displaced with respect to the rest of the C2 vertebra. And on dynamic study, we could see that the, uh, this ossicle was moving with the anterior arch of atlas, and this was suggestive of dystopic os odontoidium. Image 5C shows a tiny ossicle just at the tip of odontoid process, suggestive of persistent ossiculum terminal due to failure of fusion of terminal ossicle with the rest of the odontoid. Coming to odontoid agenesis, image, images 6A and B shows an unossified dense and there is partial C2, C3 block vertebra noted with the ossified C2 uh, body just touching the macrasian chamberlain's line, suggestive of odontoid agenesis with basilar invagination. This is a case of trauma. Images 7A and B show type 2 displaced fracture of the dense with the fracture line passing through the base. And in our study, this type 2 fracture was the most common one. Next, uh, the patient had complained of neck pain since one year and images 8A, B and C show abnormal, abnormal enhancing soft tissue abscesses at the level of C1 and C2 extending into the pre-vertebral uh, region anterior to the anterior arch of atlas and with an epidural component causing significant uh, compression at the CVJ and cord compression with myelomalacia. There was also altered marrow signal abnormality with marrow edema seen in the odontoid process, the anterior arch of C1 and the lateral mass of C1. And the abscess turned out to be tubercular in origin. Next is the case of 55-year-old uh, female, which was a known case of rheumatoid arthritis with neck pain. Image 9A shows erosions and cortical irregularities of dense. 9B shows an abnormal enhancing soft tissue panis anterior, uh, in the anterior atlantodental interval on post-contrast T1-FS images. Uh, in such cases, MRI needs to be done to look for soft tissue abnormalities. This was a case of Arnold Chiari malformation with low-lying peg-like cerebellar tonsils inferior to the foramen magnum, and the tonsillar herniation was seen 13 millimeters below the MacRae's line, suggestive of Arnold Chiari. One malformation and a long segment syrinx is seen in the cervical cord with mild cord expansion. Coming to uh, the discussion in our study, most common CVJ abnormality was of congenital cause, followed by degenerative trauma, infective, and inflammatory causes. Males were affected more than the females. Among congenital anomalies, finding of basal eye invagination was most common, which was mostly seen as in association with other abnormalities. Atlanto-occipital assimilation was the second most common, followed by os odontoidium. Among trauma, type 2 fracture of odontoid process is most common. Atlanto Anto occipital instability or subluxation was the most important complication, which was seen in 20 cases and was most commonly seen in cases with Atlanto occipital assimilation. C2 C3 block vertebra was also a common associated anomaly seen in 18 cases. So CVJ abnormalities occur in all age groups presenting with main complaints of neck pain, torticollis, short neck, headache, decreased range of motion at CVJ, decreased sensations and weakness in limbs. MDCT is the choice of investigation with dynamic study to assess the CVJ instability. MRI is recommended in conjunction with CT for assessing neurological involvement. Craniometry plays an important role in diagnosing CVJ anomalies. And these being an important group of treatable neurological disorders, it is crucial to make a precise diagnosis and classify them to help management and better prognosis. These are my references. Uh, thank you.